Stop letting people pray for you all the time. Grow to know how to pray for yourself. It's among the things that I'm going to be saying here. So that you understand it clearly. So let's go. Now, how to pray effectively and get your prayers answered. Now, let me start with the destructive power of spiritual ignorance. The destructive power of spiritual ignorance. You know, how ignorance have destroyed the life of the people of God. In the book of Hosea 4, 6, the Lord said, my people are destroyed for life. I will reject you. You hate knowledge. That's the truth. Because of the lack of knowledge. He said, I will also reject thee, that thou be no more priest unto me. You see, God doesn't want his priests to be ignorant. His messengers to be ignorant. His servants to be ignorant. That's why we need to sit down and study and hear from the Holy Ghost. He says something again. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. You see, lack of knowledge makes us to forget the laws of God because we need to study them. He said, because of this, I will also reject your children. Do you see how the ignorance of the fathers are affecting their own children? Innocent children, God said he will reject them because the fathers have rejected knowledge. And if there is any time that people are rejecting knowledge in a Christian organization, I'll say it's now. People no, want, no longer want to learn. Everybody wants to be a leader, a title holder, and all the rest. So nobody wants to learn. Again, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 14, the Lord said, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge so when a man have no knowledge he will go into captivity he will lock up himself he will become a prisoner of his own thinking or his own thoughts when a man lacks knowledge he said because therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished. That is to say, to, to famish means to suffer extremely from deprivation, deprivation of any good thing or something, things that are necessary. We are being deprived. If you want, that is what is happening in the Christian body today. Because Christians are programmed. The, the doctrine of the don't depend on God, who will depend on? That's the question. That's why I make it open. Ask your question and I'll answer you. Even today, some I was talking with somebody, he said, do you know the first day you brought that topic, I screamed. But when I kept quiet and listened to you, I said, my God, this is what we've been missing. Christians were programmed through their doctrines to depend on God. Even if they are 100 years in in Christianity, serving God, they are still depending on God. Look at look at the story Jesus gave us about the, the, the man that had two sons. We used to call the other one the prodigal son. The young man got up, knowing that he's grown, he's a man. He's not supposed to depend on his father. He's not supposed to be living with his father in the same house. He's no longer supposed to be dependent. Look, when, when he was a young man, he was with his father. But as he grew up, he knows I'm a man. I'm now a man. I need to go and prove my destiny. If I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed. But at least I need to go out there 
and do something. That's a man. The worst state of a man is not taking decision at all. Better take decision if you fail or succeed, but you have tried. He told his father, give me the share of your living that belongs to me, that, that is due me. And the man did not argue. That's a young man that want, that, stop, that want to stop depending on his father. He want to go out there and face the world. And the father gave him everything without arguing. Though he went and failed, who is to be blamed? The young man, no. His father should have discipled him. Not just give him word, but tell him, son, do it this way, son, this way. No advice, nothing. He just gave him. But the young man tried. Look at the senior boy. The senior boy, daddy's boy. Daddy's boy. All the time, daddy's boy. When he got to the age of marriage, he's still daddy's boy. Yes. He's always daddy's boy. He's in the house. He was still there. The, his brother went to the city, tried his best, came back, and his father still supplied him. He came back and saw the party going on, and he started crying, telling his father, not, not one lamb has ever been slaughtered for me and my friends to have. Yes, why? Why would any lamb be given to you? are daddy's boy. Keep staying in the house. That is what is happening to Christianity. Christians totally depend on God. When God has equipped us, he gave you dominion. Why did God give you dominion? Why did he give you dominion? To rule, power, authority, to be independent, to be able to control your vicinity, your surroundings and things around you. But Christians learn to father all the time. I pray that one day you don't pray and ask God to cook food for you. Because they are totally depending on God. When you should grow to become a man. Let me ask you a question you out there. Listening to me. How many of you? Your children. You nurse them. They grow to become youth. Then man they are still living with you. Still demanding. Mommy do this for me. Daddy do this for me. That's wrong. That's why Christians are nowhere. Because we refuse to stand on our feet. We refuse to grow to maturity. We are baby Christians all the time. Father this, father that. That's not the kind of prayer I want to teach you. No, that's not it. I want to teach you pray how to pray and get result. How to pray and get result. There are different levels of prayer. That's what I'm here to tell you. And by the grace of God Almighty, you're going to get it clear. Spiritual ignorance have destroyed the people of God. You know, is the worst ignorant ever. Majority of the Christians are spiritually ignorant of who they are, number one. Who their God is, number two. The power that is within them, they don't even know it, and the rest. That's why this coming Sunday, I'll be dealing with the power within us. This very Sunday. I'll be talking about the law of the universe and the power thereof. That is one. Then, after that, next month, I'll be talking on unlocking the power within you. You need to know who you are. You need to know the God that is in you. It is because many Christians don't know who they are. They are saying, people, pray for me. Pray for me. If, if radio is talking, they are there, clapping their hands, say amen. If TV is talking, they are there clapping there and saying amen. You don't know your relationship with your God. Men who are men of God who are supposed to be in the level of understanding what it is, is still asking people, pray for me. Pray for me. That's very, very wrong. I'm not saying people shouldn't pray for you. I'm not saying your pastor shouldn't pray for you. But not always. Not always. You are asking for prayer all the time. How then will you grow? That will lead to spiritual slavery. Spiritual bondage. You will put yourself in captivity. That's what God is saying. Because they have no knowledge. They have put themselves in captivity. You in captivate yourself. And put yourself in spiritual prison. You can no longer reach God. God is for all of us. There is no monopoly when it comes to God. No. Not one. 
Understand how to pray and your life will be a blessing. You need to know who you are. Some of the reasons for the high level of spiritual ignorance in Christianity is because of our various denominations. Our ver denomination killed Christianity. This denomination is their own. This, and this is how all the de denominations are warring against themselves. You begin to ask questions. Is it one God or different God? That's why I put a message titled Denominational Gods. But you know, they don't exist. It's just our human nature and the wickedness in a man that is fighting his own brother. And he still says he's a Christian. A man of God, a priest, a Christian, a servant of God will stand on the pulpit. Instead of blessing the people with good message, he's there criticizing other men of God, criticizing other churches. Then they will create their mundane laws. Don't marry from that denomination. Don't marry from there. These ones are wicked. Those ones, oh my goodness. Hearing this thing makes me cry. I say, what is happening in our midst? We need to understand this. So the high level of spiritual ignorance is because of our denominational differences, various denominations, then different mundane doctrines, all kinds of doctrines that are not from God. The committee made, made the law, it becomes a doctrine. People who have hatred in them, they sit down to make the laws. Mundane doctrines, the lack of enlightened Christian teachers with high level of spiritual knowledge, we lack them because the spirituality of the church is gone. The wrong programming that made Christians to always depend on God for everything instead of standing on their own or standing on their feet to face challenges and then various spiritual titles. I keep talking of titles. Have you discovered that great men don't have titles? Great men don't have titles. Look at Jesus. There is no way it is there mentioned Reverend Jesus or Pastor or Bishop. Look at great men. Mention the men in the world. You know them. I don't want to begin to say any name here. They have no title. It is, it is people who have not gotten anything who want title. So use your title to make up. Title is like a makeup. No matter the type of makeup you use in the night, you wash it off. You come back to yourself. Title can protect you. Title can't change anything in you. Title, it cannot change anything in you. It can upgrade you. No way. you do that people see be your title Yeshua the son of the living God spent lots of his time on daily basis teaching and training his 12 disciples 12 people he bent on training them teaching them developing them making them to become like him that is what discipleship is the church can transform nobody because the church does not do discipleship. Discipleship is one-on-one -on -one relationship. And it cannot be done in the church. Because no pastor will want to have 12 members. No, he wouldn't. But Jesus had 12. I'm not saying you should have 12 members. But you should know how to disciple people. And that's it. If you read the book, it's all about teaching. If we're not teaching the people, nothing will go well. Look at the book of jo Matthew chapter 13. Let me read this. Matthew 13. Let me show you where Jesus was teaching and instructing his people. And he asked them whether they understood this. Now look at Matthew 13. I'll read 51 and 52. Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? He was teaching them many things. And he said to them, Have you understood all? all these things that's a teacher they said unto him yea lord we got it 
We understood what you are saying. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is the householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. It is a man that keeps things in the house that knows where they are. A stranger cannot bring it out. Look at Acts of Apostles, chapter 1. I'll read verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. What we lack these days is teaching. Instead of teaching the people how to pray, we gather them and we start praying for them. That is slavery. Instead of teaching our members, teaching our people how to pray so that the knowledge will spread, we, we, we become the Pharisees. We lock the door. We want them to be under us. So we pray for them and they depend on us. That is ritual slavery. You enslave them. So anything they need, oh, pray for me. Then, then you... The man of God will carry phone. I'm a busy man. Very busy. You are not supposed to be that busy. You are not supposed to be. How many people will you pray for? Teach them to pray. And they will become independent. But our fear is when we teach them. They will leave us and go and open their own branch. Thank you very much. That's the best. That's just the best. Teach them. Let them go and open somewhere. If they, if they want to leave you, you can't stop them. You can't. That's just the truth. But the fear is, if I teach them, they become like me. Then they will go and open somewhere. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. What did Jesus say? We should be teaching the people. We should go and make disciples of all nations. And be teaching them. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also it's about teaching it's about teaching we are in the time that knowledge has increased but go into the church knowledge is going down we need to come up we need to boost up our knowledge we need to teach people let me tell you something you know one thing that title does in the ministry or in Christianity, once you receive one title, you are finished. Even say deacon. Because you are deacon, they give you one special seat. You don't even know what a deacon means. They give you one seat, you sit down there. Then come to humble yourself and learn to learn how to pray. No way. Deacon, elder, pastor, evangelist, most reverend, and all and all and all. Then if they make it prophet, oh my God, nobody talk to you anymore. Or prophetess. That's it. It becomes something else. Title blocks knowledge. It removes humility from us. We should learn to humble ourselves. Now, let us go into the prayer teaching. Luke 11. Luke 11, I'll read verse 1 to 13. Okay. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. The disciple that was saying this thing knew John very well. Possibly this is Andrew. He knew John very well. He had followed John. He knew that John also taught his disciples to pray. John was not praying for his disciples. He taught them to pray. It, it, there is no way in this scripture that Jesus was praying for them. Every day he prays for them. No, he taught them to pray. Jesus was praying on his own. 
He didn't want to enslave them. In these days, we enslave the people. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. Connect to prayer, connect. All over the net is connect to prayer. That is wrong. Build the people so that they too will be strong. There is no monopoly in the things of God. It's not only me. I have taught my disciples on how to walk miracles. I've taught them on how to heal the sick. They don't need me to do it. When it comes to healing, they don't need me. They do it. When it comes to miracle, they don't need me. Some of them also can raise the dead. Can heal the sick. Knowledge will spread. But if it's only me, then everybody will surround me. Oh, the man carries great anointing. Listen, let me tell you one thing with anointing. Anointing is like a flow. When it's given to you and you release it, it comes more. Anointing grows by giving out. It spread by giving out. But if God gives you a little, you hoard it because you don't want others to also be blessed or do the things you do. It will stagnate. It will decay. It will become like the Dead Sea in you. That's why a lot of people are living in old, old anointing. The testimony is testimony of 19, 2000 and, or, or, or maybe 1999, year 2000. Because no fresh miracle. You don't release. When you release, you get more. Teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples, verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> he said, Give us this day our daily bread. He began to teach them, word by word, how to pray. He didn't gather them and begin to pray for them. He taught them. So let's go. I don't want to finish it down to 13. All you know is the body of the prayer which he prayed for them. Okay, but there are something. In verse 5, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend let me have three loaves this portion i will handle it later so let me not read it now but let me start explaining now having said this one important thing i want you to know when it comes to prayer is if your prayers are not answered it means you have not prayed for God is not deaf that he does not hear. No, he's not. You pray and God hears it, he will answer you. That's the truth. There is no delay in God answering prayers. He answers immediately. He said, you will call me once and I'll answer you seven times. While you are yet speaking, I will hear you. He said, call me in the time of trouble and I will answer you. I will show you greater mighty things that you don't know. That's our God. He's our Father. If you know the relationship between you and your Father or the relationship between a father and a son or daughter, that's the way it is with us, with God. Nothing different. But we are too far away from Him. We are too far away. In a house, I want to ask this question. In a family, let's say a family, a man and woman that have seven children. And then the senior brother. Does any of the, of the children go and meet the senior or any, any of them say, please go and tell daddy, I need this. No. You go to your father direct. That's what God said. Come unto me, all you that labor, and I have it, and I will give you rest. 
come direct unto me. So let us go number one. How do we start our prayers? To pray effectively. How do we do it? Number one thing you must know. Write it down. Write it down so you don't forget it. Number one thing and which is the most important is you must understand what prayer is all about. What is prayer? You can't do what you don't know. You can't say what you don't know. So first of all, understand what prayer is all about. What is prayer? If you don't know what prayer is, how can you pray? But do you know one funny thing? In Christianity, everybody believes I can pray. Ah, is it not to talk to God? Father in heaven, how are you? I love you, Lord. You are great. This and that is good. But you have to know how to put your words aright. You have to understand what prayer is. You must understand the real meaning of prayer. And what prayer is all about. You cannot do effectively what you don't understand. But you can only do effectively what you understand clearly. To pray means you want to talk to or speak to the Almighty God. To say you want to pray, like say, oh, I want to pray. It means you want to talk to God. It means you want to talk to the Almighty. Prayer means talking or speaking to the Almighty God. That's what prayer means. I don't want us to give it some definition or meaning that we will not understand. Prayer simply means talking to one person, the Almighty God, the King of Glory. Prayer means talking or speaking to the Almighty God. Prayer is a personal, you see, talking to the Almighty God, not somebody talking to God on your behalf, or somebody talking to you, or you talk to the person, the person talk to God, or God talk to the person to talk to you. No! Somebody can pray for you, right? But you need to start talking to God yourself. That's how I managed to raise the people that God put in my care. And today they are all champions. Everybody knows it's right. And I have rest. Why should I every day be praying for everybody? Or if I carry my phone, I'll be praying for all of them. It's not right. I will enslave them. They will become spiritually barren. They will become imprisoned spiritually. They will become unfruitful spiritually. If I begin to pray for them every day. Say no, it's, it is wrong. Any man of God or any minister or pastor that is doing it is enslaving the people. Release them so that they too can talk to God. All you need to do is to teach them how to do it. How to do it. And you, everybody will be okay. That's the truth. Now prayer is a private and personal affair with God. It's private. Prayer is private. Prayer is a personal and private affair with God Almighty. It's between you and God. Even if we are praying congregational prayer in the church where everybody is together, it's still personal. When I'm talking to God, Father, do this, you are talking your own, everybody is on his own. Prayer is personal. One on one with God. It's not what you call this person, pray for me, that person, pray for me. Then a, a man of God will gather everybody be praying. No, don't pray for us. Teach us to pray. How long will you? Supposing something happen when that man of God is not there, what will you do? You start calling the person on the phone. What if you can't reach him? That means you're dead. Learn to challenge things and talk by yourself. Stop depending on your pastor. Bro, 
Nobody depends on me. Why should they depend on me? Am I their God? I am not. I'm the servant of the Almighty sent to train them and build them. And they are doing excellently well. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Father. Prayer is talking to your creator. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Mm. So it is not a small thing at all. People have taken prayer. What does it, is it not just to pray? <laughs> Sorry. It's not just to pray. Get an answer. That's what makes prayer good. You know, when my father was training me on prayer, he comes almost all the time he comes. In a day, he comes many times. So I enjoy prayer because when he comes, he'll be talking to me. I'll be hearing him. He asked me to live alone. So I was living alone. No disturbance. Nobody is there with me. So when he comes, I'm inside. The door is locked. And he'll be teaching me, showing me things, a lot of mysteries. But oh, one day something happened. He came to me and said, son, you know, I will not be coming to you again the way I used to come. Hey! I said, Lord, what happened? He said, I won't be coming to you the way I used to come. You won't be hearing my voice the way you used to hear it. Now. I said, Lord, please. Is it because of my sin? He said, no, it's not about sin. I said, Lord, what did I do? He said, no, son, you are growing faster. You are growing very well. A time will come. I will not come the way I'm coming. You will call. I will answer you, but you will not hear me. I said, Lord, why will you do this to me? But you raised me. You trained me. So why are you doing this? He said, no, because the just shall live by their faith. I want you to live by faith. Because you need to start trusting me. This one that I'm coming all the time does not mean you trust me. You're enjoying the relationship. You're enjoying my presence all the time. I come to you. It does, it does not mean you have faith in me. I want to see you when, you are, when I'm not there. You believe that I'm there. When I'm not there, you say, yes, my father is there with me. When I'm not there, you strongly believe that I'm going to do this. Ha! I say, Lord, this is great. This is something else. And it happened. It happened. I cried. But I have no nothing to do. You know? That's God doesn't want you to depend on him. That is what is killing Christianity. The only thing that destroyed Christianity is depending on God. When we are supposed to be standing on our feet like men. Jesus said I give unto you power. What is it for? To go and start depending on oh my God. <laughs> we need, you need to hear that teaching again. Thank you so very much. It's alright. Then, I'm still on just. You need to understand what prayer is all about. You must understand that you are talking to a divine person. A spirit. The most powerful person in the entire world. So prayer is not children's business. Hmm? Prayer is not children's business. So there must be this transformation that will be in you. You must know what you are doing. It's not to play. Go to the churches today. Let us pray. Some people there. While the prayer is going on, say, Hello, John, 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 I'm praying. Yes. So what happened? Are you in the house? Hey, make food and eat. <laughs> There's somebody that is praying. <laughs> in the church. In the church. Even the pastor leading the prayer. You say, Yes. I've not finished service. I'm still in the church. Oh no, you don't understand what prayer is. You need to get prayer and understand who it is, what it is. Okay, let's go to number two. Number one is you must understand the meaning of prayer. So number two, you must understand why you want to pray. There is a reason why you want to do it. You don't just get up and say, I see people say, ah, wait for me, let me just pray pray small prayer before God. There is no small or big prayer. <laughs> prayer is prayer because there is no small God or big God that will listen to your prayer. If you pray small prayer, small God will listen. If you pray big prayer, big God will listen. It doesn't exist. So nothing like small prayer or big prayer. Prayer is something that is out of this world. That's why there are no answers. We can gather for 100 days, pray and scream, shake our head and dance and everything. All oh, nothing works. Nothing. 
It's a personal thing between you and your God. So you must understand why you want to pray. So what's your reason? Without purpose, all the labor of man on earth will be in vain. Your purpose is your reason. Your purpose is your why. So you must have a good reason or reasons for coming to God in prayer. You don't just go to a king. There must be a reason. You don't just go there. There must be a reason. You can't just go to the president. There must be a reason why you are there. God is, uh, he, he is the king of the whole universe. You must have reason for going to him. That's why when we start, when we start talking, you, you will understand what it means to have a prayer list. Just like you going to the people who go to shopping and they don't have lists. They, they, they waste their money. They buy unnecessary things. But when you have your list, you go for the list is your priorities. The things you need. If you don't go with list, you buy what you don't need. But if you go with list, same thing with prayer. You need a prayer list. I'm coming to that. I, I, I just fast forwarded. You know? You must know why you want to go to God. Something must drive you. Something must push you to go to God. There must be a reason. Why you want to go to God. That reason is why you must be there. Something must fire you up. You must be desperate and forget every other thing. Just like Esther did. Say if I die, I die. It, look, she mean business and she went to the king. Until you have that kind of desperation, you don't really want to pray. Note, if you don't have any good reason for wanting to pray, then... Don't waste your time going to pray because your labor will be in vain. It will not be fruitful. If you don't have any reason, don't just go to God. God is your father, but it's not a chief. Oh, God, the God you can just go in, talk to any. No, no, no. You need to prepare. You need to prepare. So let's see number three. You must understand the type of prayer you want to pray. Number one. You understood what prayer is. Number two, you have reason for going to God. Your reason will determine the type of prayer you pray. That's number three. So number three, write it down. Write it down. Don't forget it. Write it down completely. You can't see this thing written in any book. It's not in book. So write it down. You must understand the type of prayer you want to pray. There are many types of prayer. The reason you want to pray will now lead you to understanding the type of prayer you want to pray. Do you want to do a thanksgiving prayer? Do you want to do intercessory prayer to intercede for somebody? Do you want to do asking prayer? Do you want a request, petition? Do you want to ask God for something? Just like the Lord say, ask and you shall receive. What is it that you want? So your need, the reason for praying will not tell you the type of prayer you're going to pray. And exactly that's what it is. Until you understand this, the prayer cannot work. Do you want to make a prayer of confession? Is it a prayer of healing? Is it warfare, the prayer of spiritual warfare? Is it the prayer of deliverance or prayer of consecration? You must understand the type of prayer you want to pray. People who don't understand the type of prayer they want to pray, just open their mouth and begin to mix up everything. In cooking, you want to prepare me. There is a recipe. You have what is called recipe for baking and all the rest. You must know when to put this, when to put that, when to put this one, when to put that. That's what makes it work. Don't say, oh, is it not cooking? Once you put your water, you put your maggi, you put everything. <laughs> one of the pastors that doesn't know how to cook he told us the first time he cooked in the house he said the food was terrible it was terrible and he told himself that this this soup is different from the ones I eat in the restaurant he couldn't eat them because nobody taught him how to cook now let's go to number four send me your questions I'll soon stop so that I begin to answer your question. Send me your questions immediately. Number four, you must understand clearly who you want to pray to. You must know who you want to talk to. You must understand 
that this is God. I want to talk to God. Then you must be in a good state of mind. You want to talk to our Father in heaven? You want to talk to him? Oh my goodness. It's not something you do anyhow. Look at Isaiah 1 verse 3. Isaiah 1 verse 3. He said, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's creeds. But Israel doeth not know, my people doeth not consider. You don't know God, you want to pray to God. No, it can't work. You must know who God is. So I'm not going to finish it. This will be the part one. I'll take this for part one. Then next Monday, I'm going to do the part two. But do understand that you need to know God. Isaiah 45 verse 5, he said, I am the Lord and there is no one else. There is no God beside me. I gathered thee, though thou hast not known me. I gathered thee, but you don't know me. Understand who you want to talk to. If you understand that you want to talk to God Almighty, not me, not somebody, not your pastor, not anybody, my dear, you will humble yourself Prayer goes in humility. You see people pray. Rah, 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 rah. All manner of showbiz in prayer. You know, he's talking to God. The next thing is, the phone rings. He puts her, I'll call you back, I'll call you back. I'll call you back, Father, thank you. Uh, I'll call you back. I say, I'll call you back, Father, thank you. You need to understand who you are talking to. Ah, God Almighty, oh Jesus Christ. Come on. Our problem is we don't know him. We don't know this God, so we treat him anyhow. The Holy Ghost appeared to me in my revelation. I've seen him before like a, a bird, and that's not dove. It's a, it's a white bird with so many colors, I can't even describe it. Very beautiful bird. It's not just dove. But this time around, I he came. That day, because I took up studying him, I said, reveal yourself, I want to know you. I just want to know you very well. That day after studying about him, I just went to sleep. He came, came as a man, but was tattered. And I didn't know who he, who, who he is. And introduced himself to me as the Holy Spirit. I said, ah, Holy Spirit. He said, yes, it's the Holy Spirit that I've been hearing about. Is the Holy Spirit that Jesus told us about in the Bible. He told me exactly is the Holy Spirit. I said, then why are you like this? He said, because they are not treating me well. I came to show you myself that they are not treating me well. That the church did not even accept me. This is his, the time of the Holy Ghost. And we are not accepting him. That's the truth. We claim to love Jesus. Let me show you something that will shock you. That will make you know we didn't love Jesus. We claim we love Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Jesus is the reason. Jesus is the season for the answer. How do you put it? But let me tell you that. Let me read one scripture that will make you know that the Christians don't love Jesus. John chapter 14. I'll read verse 23 and 24. Hear this. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. That's a sign of love. If a man love me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Verse 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father's which sent me. Do we love Jesus? If we love him, he told us that he's going away, that there is a comforter. We should receive that comforter. We rejected the comforter. We rejected it. We are still calling Jesus this, Jesus that, Jesus that, showing hatred. You don't love him until you receive the Holy Spirit, he said. Until the church embraced the Holy Spirit, they will not see that miracle. They will not experience power. Power is not with Jesus. Power is not with the Almighty God. Power is with the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus said, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come unto you. And we rejected the Holy Ghost. That's why there is no power. That's why there is no power. <laughs> Only people who believe in the Holy Ghost demonstrate the power 
of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit showed himself to me and he said, because of the way they treat me, that's why I'm like this. I said, really? Oh my God. I humble myself. He said to me, son, before the virginity of the earth, I was here. Before the virginity of the earth, I was there. Oh goodness. I thank God for that very day. It was awesome. It was really, really good. You know? So we must understand, you must know God. In Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, God says you need to know him. Honestly, you can pray effectively to the God you don't know and understand very well. It is not every Christian, including pastors and ministers, that believe in the Lord God Almighty. I've seen, I've seen many pastors who don't even believe in God. But they wear the title. <laughs> Majority of the Christians are bearing the title Christian. Not because they believe in God. But because they were born into a Christian home. Christianity is a title. It's not faith. It's not because you believe. It's a title. You know? It's a title. We are Christian because we are born in Christian family. Then when people grow, they choose what they like. That's why you have you have John, but he's a native doctor. You have Mary, but is this because we are born into Christian family, but many people grow, they face their own life. They choose the religion they want. So we need to understand God. We need to know him very well. You must know the God you are praying to. This is the reason Yeshua, the son of the living God, he said, when you pray, say, our father, our father, meaning I know you, meaning you know him, meaning you have a relationship with him, our father, which art in heaven. I know you, I know where you are. Hallowed be thy name, honor, worship, praise, thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. When we understand this, I'm still going down. We just finished number number four. Then number five. Let me see. I still have a few minutes. Number five. You must understand clearly that God Almighty answers prayers. If you don't believe that God answers prayer, then why are you praying? Matthew 7, 7 to 11. You must believe that God answers prayers. These things I'm telling you are must in prayers. If you don't do these things I'm telling you, your prayer can never be answered. These are the must area. And these areas that I'm teaching you is not the areas that people teach in prayer. I'm still coming to those areas, the way to ask. Remember, I've not really entered how to ask, what to ask, ask in faith, this and that. No, no, no. Those ones come later. The major things you want to enter a house, you must climb the stairs. You want to go up, first of all, climb the stairs. You don't just jump. You can't fly inside. You must climb the staircase before you enter. One by one step, you get up there. But a lot of people want to fly. You can't fly. There are procedures. It's a procedure that makes things work effectively. There are recipes. It is your recipe that will determine what happens next. Thank you, Lord. Then you must understand clearly that God Almighty answers prayer. You need to get this into you, that God answers prayers. If you do that, then you are good to go. But I'm not yet done. We've not got to accent. Accent all those ones are the minor ones. Action, in faith, this, that, no, no. Leave those ones. Lay the foundation first. What I'm telling you is the foundations of prayer. You must lay this foundation. If you don't lay this foundation, forget about answers. You can't get them. Then, understanding that God answers prayer, I'll do, I'll do number six. And we'll stop there for today. Then we'll continue part two.
Number six says, you must believe that God Almighty will answer you. You want to pray, oh, you believe that God will answer you. If you don't believe that God will answer, then why are you pray? Number one, you must be, the, the, the number five that I said is, you must believe he answers prayers. Yes, number six, he will answer you. You must believe that. That is victory before a fight. You must believe that God, when I open my mouth and pray, God will answer me. That's concrete sure. You need to do that. You must have that assurance. If you don't have it, there is no way he's going to hear you. Without assurance, sorry, the Lord will not hear. He said, we, we have this. And this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So you must first of all believe. As I open my mouth to pray, God will hear me. First John chapter 5. Verse 14. And this is the confidence. You must have that confidence. That when I open my mouth to pray, God will hear me. Uh huh. If you don't believe that, then why pray? <laughs> These are the reasons why prayers are not answered. And if we know that He heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition. That we desire of him. First John chapter 5, 14 and 15. You have the confidence he will answer you. Yes, you have that confidence. Once you have it, you are good to go. So we stopped at number number six. Number six. That's where we stop. So we'll continue from number seven. If I have any question, then let me have it now. You are free to ask your questions, then you will learn more. Thank you, Father. Grew in prayer. Listen, I said something. I want to say it before I come to the part two. Don't make prayer your lifestyle. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you don't. Making prayer a lifestyle is for people whose prayers are not answered. <laughs> when your prayers are answered, you don't make prayer a lifestyle. You don't make talking to someone a lifestyle, no. You go present your case, they are answered, you go. You bring another one. Say, there are people that pray five times a day. Some people pray three times. The number of hours you pray or the number of times you pray has nothing to do with prayer. Your connectivity, your reception, is your, your connection to God is what matters. That, that, that you take your phone and call, they say, no network. It's okay. You call again, no network. Okay. You call 10 times in a day, no network. Fine. Somebody say, ah, this guy makes call all the time. Were you connected? No. Call again. Hello? No network. People around will say, oh, he, he makes call all the time. Were you connected? No network. No service. But somebody will pick his phone and say, hello? Oh, yes, I'm there. Okay. How you doing? This, that, that, that. Just once. <laughs> he got connected. You that have been calling 50 times in a day, say, make make phone call a lifestyle, but you are not getting connections. Make prayer a lifestyle, you keep, no, it's not so. Call him once, he hears you, the problem gets solved. The Lord God Almighty bless you. You know, uh, on Wednesday, we'll be here, Friday we'll be here, we will give you other messages. So on Wednesday and Friday, get to the line, just get connected, you hear some other of our messages that will also bless you. But every Monday, I'm here live with you. If you have your questions, very, very fine. Ask your questions. I want you to grow. It's a family affair. This Sunday, this Sunday, I'll be talking about the, part, the law of the universe. And that's one thing that I've kept the people that they are not growing. 
the law of the universe. That's what we'll be discussing. The Lord God Almighty bless you. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful time. The peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding. Be with you. Bless you and bless you more and more. Bless your life. Yes, um, we have a time change. You know, we normally do these 10 to 11, but we no longer be doing it 10 to 11. It's the time will now change to 8 to 9 p.m. 8 to 9 p.m. That's the time we're going to be doing it. So adjust yourself so that by 8 and 9, you are done. God bless you. God bless you. Speak the word of prayer. Pray. Talk to God all by yourself. Tell my father what you want. He will do it for you. Believe it. Speak. Are you sick? Lay hand on your body. Command that sickness to disappear. Is business not going well? Speak unto your business. Release yourself. Decree and say you are get, getting married. Oh my God. That's one of the things we are going to be talking about. How we can change our lives. That is the law of the universe that we'll be talking about. The Lord God Almighty bless you and bless your entire family. we we'll see here again by the grace of God Almighty on Monday live. 8 to 9 p.m. Bye-bye.